Hi, this is Sean Cunningham, CEO of the VAB. I'm being joined today by James Rook, who's General Manager of Effective, and we're going to talk live sports. And in some ways, this could be, you know, to some respect, like any January, in the sense that, you know, we had NFL playoff games yesterday. This week, both the NBA and the NHL are going to be in action. But also, this week, college basketball games were canceled because of COVID concerns. So it's anything but a normal live sports January. Um, but there's also a set of tools that make this is a very interesting sports January. And I want to talk to James today about what I consider to be one of the most important nexus points in all of advertising. And that's where you've got the sheer scale of those live sports audiences. And it sits at the intersection today of what you can do with first party data, you know, precise first party set top box data and what you can learn about those live sports audiences. So to me, that sheer scale and the precision of the set top box data that's that's the really interesting thing. So James, let me let me get right into as top of the sheer scale that we see with live sports with the set of data tools that you have with Effective. What are some of the data insights that you can see that others may not able, might not be able to see with the data tools, data and the data insights that you have about live sports and the live sports audience? Sure. Firstly, Sean, it's great to chat to you again. I think this is the second one we've done in in COVID. So. Uh, Good to see you again, I hope as well. Um, so look, it's a great question. I think sports is, is a fascinating topic to kind of cover uh, as it pertains to the intersect of data and audience-based buying based on what happened in, 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 in 2020 with COVID. And sports remains such an important anchor for advertisers who either want to target specific sports content um, or take a more audience-based approach and target those viewers wherever they're viewing the content. And um, what our aggregate set-top box data uh, from Comcast allows us to do is derive really important insights into viewing behaviors of those sports viewers. And what we've done is we've translated those insights into a sports matrix to help our advertisers find adjacencies to their audiences in order to continue to reach them successfully. Um, and what, what that really means is we can use the power of our Comcast set of box data to better construct campaigns that continue to kind of follow the sports audience across programming in a really reliable and a consistent way. Um, and as you kind of said at the top, this type of insight is really important at the moment particularly as sports schedules continue to, to change. Um, and what we found is that sports viewing hasn't decreased. In fact, the opposite has been true, but rather those, the, these kind of these sports super fans um, tend, to, tend to move and watch other sports when their kind of core you know, number one sport that they watch uh, isn't, isn't on TV. And while it's like it's an obvious insight that fans across the board have diverse insight, um, sorry, diverse um, interests in terms of different sports. What really matters, and this is where the data comes in, is specifically understanding what those interests are, so you can enable advertisers to better target them. And uh, our data is showing us that about fifty-five percent of really heavy sports viewers uh, typically watch three or more. Uh, sports on a consistent basis and that um, there are different groups of call them super fans that tend to gravitate consistently to um, the kind of second third or fourth sports that they they watch so as an example major league baseball super fans tend to typically over index um, to watch the nhl um, golf and NCAA basketball. So overall, what's really critical is being able to start with uh, first party deterministic data to drive those types of insights out. So against the backdrop of wild kind of shifting schedules and sports, advertisers can continue to follow their audience uh, despite those changes. James, it's interesting that you were talking about the super fans and, you know, using baseball as an example, and I'm a hardcore baseball fan, but I'm also a serious hockey nut. And so for me, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the insights that, you know, Matrix would have worked beautifully on, as well as for me in other sports. But for me, the great thing about, you know, the sports audience, the live sports audience is it's personal. You know, if that baseball, hockey, I consider those essentially food groups and, you know, 
to be able to, you know, to to reach me, if not my 1A and my 1B is is terrific now. But I've got to ask because the, clearly, you know, the matrix and the other first party data set tools that you have were put to the test. If you think about everything that was displaced starting in March of 2020, where you had full advertising campaigns ready to go for, you know, for sports dependent advertisers. And were you were you able to you know use the data insights that you have to be able to you know replace and mass if you will entire schedules uh, when you were looking for these displaced sports fans was it, were you able to pull that off in 2020? Yeah, look, our data was put to the test, but in, in a way the um, looking back is only going to be good for for our business, and I hope also you know the industry also, which maybe we can talk about a little bit later. Um, it was a it was it was a it was a very difficult time for for everyone, and um, it took a bit of time to adjust. But um, as you know, our client base runs the spectrum from very small businesses all the way up to the largest agencies and brands. And if there was one kind of shared need, which you just hit on a second ago, across our client base, it was giving them confidence that we could continue to deliver against their target audience, despite the significant shifts uh, in both sports programming, but also kind of more broadly, uh, the significant shifts in viewing habits as people move to remote work. Um, we found huge, huge success in leaning in with the data to help instill confidence that we were able to continue to deliver those coveted sports audiences even as sports programming either went away completely or or shifted and so it's um really highlighted the importance of first party deterministic data to be able to kind of demonstrate as we did the the sports audience didn't go away when covid hit and sports programming went away it just shifted and it shifted to new places. And we were able to kind of use that aggregate uh, Comcast data to be able to demonstrate where the viewing shifted to and then adjust those campaigns to be able to continue continue to hit those target audiences despite those viewership changes. Yeah, so the, these data-driven actionable insights and the experience of right. these advertisers, you know, use the tool not in test mode, in live mode, campaigns, things that registers have to ring and, you know, you, you need to continue to have the results in a very tough advertising environment. So when the fruits were seen of being able to pursue this live sports audience, wherever they were, do you think that that changed the way that your advertisers may now think about sports advertising, meaning that they may not be thinking it from a content first perspective, which is the way we've always thought about sports and the attractive properties in sports were, you know, by name, basketball, hockey, football, baseball, that type of thing. Do you think now that they're starting to understand that the advantage is in thinking about it from a sports audience and live sports audience first perspective? Yeah, look, I, I am convinced that's the case. And I think there's no going back. We've seen such a major shift uh, since COVID started toward audience-based buying. And in my opinion, what happened with sports um, in our country was really the catalyst more broadly for a shift in the media industry uh, to more audience-based executions. Now that was granted happening already, but it has just been moved or fast-forwarded um, at a pace that none of us ever could have predicted um before and that's not to say that buying against content specific um uh, specific shows or specific sports programming at specific times is going to go away i don't think that will at all there are coveted events um think monday night football um think the olympics the super bowl etc cetera, etc cetera, which uh, uh will, will remain kind of i think as they are but just more broadly speaking there's so much great sports content out there that uh, using it as an anchor, but being able to use the data to demonstrate how you can follow that audience wherever they go with their viewing behavior. Um, sports has kind of highlighted the importance of doing that because of what happened with sports programming early in, in COVID. So I think that there's just gonna be an acceleration of a movement, not just within sports programming, but overall towards kind of more audience-based uh, executions. 
And I think that will get accelerated further by the fact that viewing continues to kind of fragment against more distribution channels. And so an advertiser needs the ability to be able to execute, not just across where viewing is taking place on more kind of linear television uh, distribution channels, but also across streaming TV and the ability to bring those two together um, and provide kind of one campaign, um, what, you know, one plan, one report, one bill at the back end across that multi-screen TV inventory is, is absolutely, absolutely critical. And we've been really leaning in with the data to be able to kind of demonstrate the return on investment benefit of moving to a more audience-based execution. So last year, as an example, we finished a study, which was, I think, across uh, 100,000 campaigns and 30 million commercial airings, where we were able to demonstrate that on average, campaigns that aired on more networks had double the reach compared to those that executed on kind of less than 10 networks. And that was regardless of the spend level. And that's a pretty significant insight um, because I think as an industry, we're gonna have to continue to lean in and uh, demonstrate with results, the benefit of moving to an audience-based execution. So proof of performance will become really critical, I think in 2021 and, and beyond. Yeah, it's interesting. You take the combination of, you know, the trial by fire, if you will, and you think about what's transpired since March and all of the things that you needed to do for, you know, all of your, you know, advertisers that were covering live sports audiences and the tools you're able to use and the ability to get those campaigns well done. Plus the study that you mentioned, which is, you know, obviously an enormous study, kind of a combination of those two things for your customer base and people who have nothing to do with live sports, but just the advent of audience-based buying and moving, you know, to truly driven by, you know, sophisticated first party data driven insights as the way to go over content. In a way, the way I was thinking about it, we, we, you may have, you know, done 36 months worth of progress in 10 months, you know, sort of folded the map, if you will. So now when you're, when you're talking to clients and, you know, it feels like we're on the, the cusp of this pivot and it's been accelerated by, you know, the, by, you know, things we didn't foresee in February of last year. Uh, but now we, we really are quite advanced with what we've been able to do. When you describe to clients the, the benefits of data-driven audience-based buying, who, you know, maybe really long-term clients that you've got a great working relationship with and they're, you know, they've got great monetization, finding good audiences, they're all looking to find, you know, the, the next best audience. Is there an aha moment when you talk to them where it just clicks and makes sense uh, and they're able to say, okay, yeah, let's do it. Is, is there a common... You know, we've talked about some of the crystallizing points, but from for your client set, and we're talking to, you know, people you've got, you know, lo, you know, long successful relationships with. Is there an aha moment where it just clicks into the place, and they're saying, "Yep, yeah, okay, sign me up, let's do it." Yeah, listen, I, I think you summed it up nicely a second ago, which is um, what happened in 2020 because of the impact of COVID um, accelerated. I would argue behaviors for, uh, in the industry three to five plus years in a matter of months um, and overall that's a good thing um, from an advertising standpoint because the um, traditional media companies in particular were already moving against a set of pivot points that were critical if the industry is to kind of main competitive um, relative to many of the large kind of technology, the, the, the large uh, uh, tech companies, uh, tech platform companies. Um, and so I think we passed the tipping point and now there are a number of kind of execution related challenges that need to be um, overcome, which I can you know, get into later if, if, if helpful. But as it pertains to the ahas, I think what, where we've seen success this year, recognizing that because of the, the rapid shift that happened, you're still dealing with having to drive behavior changes um, where uh, multi-screen TV, or I guess uh, before streaming TV existed, just linear TV was typically bought on content. So, you know, despite what we've been talking about with COVID, it's still years and years of behavior change that needs to be kind of rewired um, and that takes time. And so for our sales team, the real successes have been seen when we've been leaning in 
with data-driven stories where we can work with our clients to get them to trust the data and be able to kind of demonstrate um, the ROI uplift of taking a more audience-based execu uh, execution. Um, and that's particularly important with more traditional advertisers for the reason I said a second ago. You know, I think talking of kind of trusting the data, that is one of the most important initial ahas is that advertisers are inundated with a bunch of solutions and there's a lot of noise out there. And recognizing the difference between um, being able to plan campaigns and deliver campaigns successfully on the foundation of first party deterministic data sets versus third party model data sets um, is really critical because obviously there's a big difference between knowing how many times any given household was exposed to a campaign versus modeling whether they're likely to be exposed. And so breaking this down and helping to explain the data in simple ways and demonstrate that all, not all data sets are created equal um, has been really kind of critical for us. That's kind of number one. Um, the second I touched on a second ago, which is it's on us to have to prove it. Um, and so where we've seen success is being able to ensure that we have the right backend attribution to be able to demonstrate side by side the difference between taking a more kind of content based versus audience based execution. And one thing we found helpful is really breaking that down, whereby we may take a more phased approach by say, hey, let us demonstrate just on linear TV. If, you, if you're used to just buying that, um, historically, the ROI uplift of a demo based campaign versus a, um, um, an audience based execution. And then phase two is layering on um, TV streaming inventory and saying, and on top of that, let us demonstrate the incremental lift by allowing us to execute that campaign and follow that audience across both TV and streaming TV. And it's the combination of the two, taking an audience base plus a multi-screen um, uh, approach, which we see the most value in. And, and those are the kind of aha moments that are happening every single day. And if I look at the data in our business, um, there's been such a significant shift in terms of the total number of kind of campaigns we're executing against audience um, versus the traditional way, I believe we're past the tipping point and there's there's really no going back. Yeah, and I think that accelerant is the key one. You know, I, I talked about a you know an aha moment or when it clicks in and to be able to do that with a completed data loop and to have the sophistication of saying, look, I've modeled your ROI lists, you've modeled your side-by-sides versus a, exactly. a content-based approach, you know, and a, if you will, here would your way you would have done it for content and GRPs, and here's the way you're gonna do it with respect to, you know, impressions and audience-based buying. And, you know, here are your bottom line you know, ROIs, and here are, you know, the, the, the campaign lifts, and here are the effects on digital. I, I think that in a way, you know, to use, a, to use a bad expression, that's the great convincer. So, you know, uh, I think that completes the loop with respect to, you know, sophisticated first party data and its effects on business. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in, you know, if there's one thing I think we're, uh, if we can be pleased with, pleased with anything that came out of, you know, what was an incredibly challenging 10 months is I think we did fold the map with respect to, you know, uh, our insights and our industry and our data. And, uh, and I think we're, we're moving forward now at a, at a rapid clip that may not have occurred on the as quickly as the were the trajectory that we were on it would have occurred but not this quickly yeah um, I, I look I, I i agree um you know however there's always a, a however um there are some there are some kind of big barriers that will stop us kind of uh reaching um escape velocity uh, escape velocity on this the as an industry i think we have to rally around and sure you know you and i have talked about these a, a couple of times um, one is around audience segment definition. Um, if you're an advertiser, um, it's not just about advertising with effective. It's about, I want to reach my target audience across uh, a multitude of different inventory owners. And so right. how we get to more common definition of audience segments becomes important if we're going to simplify things for an advertiser. So, you know, we're working closely with our partner um, our, our partner Ampersand, as an example, 
on that. I know for national programmers, if you look at initiatives like OpenAP, uh, are looking to solve for that. But that becomes really important because television overall has to simplify how it is bought. And if we're going to move to an audience-based execution, then um, segment definitions becomes kind of one of one of one of many kind of execution priorities. And the second one we've talked about before is we're going to move to more of an audience-based world, particularly when you execute across multi-screen TV then you got to move away from uh, Nielsen gross rating points and you got to move to an impression based model like that is just that is just foundational. So I think there are some kind of big boulders that we need to collectively work on if we are to kind of reach that escape velocity. Um, I think we passed the tipping point, as, as I said earlier, um, but it's not just what we can do within the our individual kind of companies that we work in. I think it's what we can do as an industry to really kind of make this um, uh, make this kind of as scaled as possible. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the perfect perfect way for us to wind down today. Is that you're absolutely right in that you can solve for all the myriad of things that you've innovated and solved for through your capabilities on your platform. But you know, knowing that what the advertisers' needs are and their sales goals are, and you know the way that they think about their investment, having common audience definitions and thinking across you know multiple platforms, platforms, multiple publishers thinking about it, you know, from a local perspective, regional perspective, national perspective, and understanding that it, you know, it, it all needs to fit under common definitions. Totally agree that in 2020, those are the headlines of, you know, we need to make them from, from, you know, boulders to things that are in motion. And, you know, I think that the most important thing is that we, you know, we're on, you know, we're, on, we, we've all pointed to them, we've named them, we've said, these are the priorities. Now it's time to, to, you know, move the boulders. So, I appreciate, you know, the time and uh, all of the insights and, uh, you know, uh, sports has changed a heck of a lot for the better. And uh, I think we really did fold the map in uh, since March and learning a lot and inspiring advertisers to, to, you know, to get to their next best audience. Thank you, James. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate the time as always.